break from section C.1. This is C.1. We're going to come back to this problem uh, probably tomorrow. But we're going to take a break and we're going to learn how to factor really, really well. Do you want to learn how to factor really, really well? Yes. I'll make you a guarantee. If you can't factor, your success in this class is going to plummet. You have to be able to factor because it's in a lot of what we do. A lot of what we do has to do with factoring. So, OMG, how do we do factoring? Did I just really say OMG? <laughs> We're not going to start off with this one. We're going to come back to that. We're going to build up to that problem. <coughs> I am going to give you a whole bunch of steps for factoring, though, how to do things. The first step that you're going to have to do, and you know what? People forget all about this step all the time. Right at the beginning, they're great at it. But then when we deal with the more advanced factoring, they always forget about the step. Don't forget about the step. It's for you guys. Oh, Don't forget about the step. Step one is please factor out the greatest common factor first. Right off the bat, if you have a greatest common factor, get rid of that thing. We'll talk about that in and just say what that actually means. Factor out the greatest <coughs> common factor first before you do anything else. You might not always have one, though, so I'm going to put if this exists. But you always should look for it. <coughs> Bless you. Okay. Now, yeah, so that first thing you check, greatest common factor, we get it done. Next thing you check for is you count the number of terms that you have. Number of terms are those things that are separated by pluses and minuses, all right? So that's how we count number of terms. If you have two terms, there's a couple of things we can do. So four two terms. If you have two terms, it has to fall in one of three categories in order to actually factor it. First thing you're going to check for is, I hope this, this sounds familiar to you, is if it is a difference of squares, have you ever heard of a difference of squares before? Mm -hmm. If you haven't, all, we'll talk about what that means uh, in a little bit. So first thing is a difference of squares. Here's what a difference of squares is. It says you have one number squared, a num another number squared, and what's a difference in mathematics? Minus subtraction. And there's a minus between them. That's a difference of squares. So difference of squares looks like this. Here's the general form. You have some quantity squared. That's one squared. Minus means a difference. Some other quantity. That's the general form for difference of squares. The cool thing about a difference of squares is they can always be factored. Always, always, always. And here's how you do it. It's not, not hard to factor it. You just have to know the form. Here's how you factor a difference of squares. You say, okay, I'm going to take our A plus our B. And then a different set of parentheses. What's this mean between these parentheses? A minus B. That's a difference of squares. Do you want to see why it works? Would you like to see that real quick? I'll give you the proof of it. Well, not really a full proof. But if we take this, I can prove to you that that equals this. So if I do your <coughs> A plus B, A minus B, do you know how to distribute two terms by two terms? The foil. Yeah, the foil. That's right. Yeah, exactly right. So distribution on that will give us, hey, what's A times A? A times A squared. Then we have 
A times negative B, that's going to give us minus AB. True? Yes. Yeah. Then we're going to have plus AB. Notice that doesn't matter. Uh, multiplication is commutative. So that's plus AB. And then minus B squared. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen in your middle terms? Bam. That's awesome. Did it work? Yeah. Works every time. And this was general. We didn't make any assumptions about A or B. This works for everything. As long as you can have a, a something squared minus something squared, you see it, you can factor it. That's good news for us because it gets rid of the squares. Look at that. They're gone. That's fantastic. So difference of squares works very well for us. There's only two other ones, <clears throat> two other forms that you can have and still factor with two terms. The first one is a difference of cubes. What's, what do you think is going to be the difference between squares and cubes? Three. Three. Yeah, the cube means a three, square means a two. So let's talk about a difference of cubes. Yeah, difference of cubes is really, really similar. The only difference is instead of the powers 2, we have powers 3. So we're going to have A cubed, still a difference, B cubed. And there's still a form that we have. So here's what we do. We'll have our A minus B. The second part's a little bit different than up here, though. You know what? Let me change this for you. Change it for your notes if you want, because I want to show you some similarities here. Can you make that a minus and make that a plus for me? Does it really change anything? Yeah. No. Uh, but I want to show you that this, is, this happens in every one of these three forms. Notice how minus, minus, and then the different sign. Do you see that? <coughs> this is the same. Minus, minus, and then we're going to have a different sign somewhere in here. Here's the second part of this, the second factor. We'll have our a squared. We'll have a plus. See how we have a plus here? We'll have a, b. At the very end, we'll have plus b squared. Notice how we have same, different. We have same, different. And that one's a plus. That one's always going to be a plus, even in the next thing that I give you, okay? Are you okay with these, these terms here? The last one we can have is called a sum of cubes. What do you think is going to be the difference between a difference of cubes and a sum of cubes? Yeah, that's exactly right. <coughs> So it will look real similar. Still a cubed. We have a plus though. B cubed. And the form's even going to look similar to this. Here's the thing that's going to change. Notice how we had same sign, same sign. We're still going to have the same sign. So the first thing should be a plus b. Can you use the pattern here to kind of tell me what should be next? We should still have an a squared. You're exactly right. People have a plus or a minus. Minus. It's gonna be a minus. A b. This one is still gonna be a b squared though, and that happens when you multiply uh, negative b times negative b, you get a positive b squared. So it'll still be plus b squared. <coughs> you okay with those so far? Well, kind of. I mean, you have no examples for them yet, do you? So we're going to cover a couple of those so you actually know what's going on. Uh, but first I'd like to tell you what to do with three terms, and then we'll go through a whole bunch of examples and really get this thing nailed down. So first, first part of our story, get the greatest common factor out if you have one. Second thing, you count the number of terms. You have two terms, different squares. That's the easiest one. That's the best one. If it's not different squares, you check if it's a difference of cubes. If it's not that, you check the sum of cubes. If it's not one of these three, and it has two terms, you cannot factor it. Does it look like I'm missing one? What about sum of squares? 
you're going to find out the sum of squares is not factorable. You can't factor a sum of squares. Um, well, I'll, maybe I'll give you an example in a little while about how you can't factor sum of squares. But there's, there's nothing where that's a plus. There's a sum of cubes, but not a sum of squares. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so we have our two terms down. Let's talk about what happens if you have three terms. For three terms, you're going to use something that's called, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, called the diamond method. If you haven't heard of the diamond method before, I'll teach it to you when we do our first examples here in just a little bit. But we're going to have to use a diamond method. <clears throat> Actually, this is going to be like diamond, it's more like an X, but X method sounds kind of lame. Diamond method sounds awesome, so of course you use that. Okay, and the next one, the last one, if you have four terms, the only thing you can do is factor by grouping in this class. There, is, there are ways to factor four terms, but it's kind of out of our scope here. So for four terms, the option we have left is factor by grouping. I'm hoping that you've seen that before also. We will review it. Bless you. Also, one more thing that I, I need you to do. Once you factor something, you're also going to check to see if the factors can be factored. Because sometimes you can factor several times. Are you with me on that? Don't you? Yeah. Some, I'm losing some of you, huh? Some of you are zoning already. I know it's our first class. You're like, oh, it's like 15 minutes of math. What's going on here? But uh, make sure you're still with me on this, okay? Factor your factors. Make sure you do that. So we'll say check to see, or check if factors can be factored. Okay, that was a whole lot of writing and not a whole lot of math. Would you guys like to see some examples on how to do some of this stuff? All right. It's kind of the answer I was hoping for. I just got you to say you all wanted to do math. Do you realize that? <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do, let's see if we can start simply. We'll look at something like this. squared B minus 4AB. <coughs> Bless you. Man, you got it today, huh? You just kind of got the sneezes going on. It's all right. Okay. First thing we look for is if it's a difference of squares, difference of cubes. True or false? True. <coughs> what do you think? What's the first thing that we should try to do at any time we ever factor? That is number one, okay, before you even count the number of terms. So I really don't care that it's two terms right now. Don't care. It could be ten terms. The first thing we look for is factor the greatest common factor. Now, here is what that means. The greatest common factor is a number or a variable or some quantity that divides every term that you have up there. So the first thing we'll look at is, is there a number that goes...